The Crosstown Cup kicks off tonight, the first of four this week between the Cubs and the Sox. Chilly night on the north side, and the Cubs try to cool off Jose Abreu as Anthony Rizzo and the Cubs welcome in the Southsiders. Great to have you with us tonight. Happy Cinco de Mayo along with Jim Deshays. I'm Len Casper. Uh, the Cubs coming off their first series win of the year. The White Sox scuffling right now. But wow, what a start for Jose Abreu. Yeah, the big guy has uh, stepped into the big leagues and uh, made it look like the Little League so far. Player of the month, rookie of the month. His first month in the big leagues, nobody's ever done that. Hits the ball with power to all fields. It's going to be a challenge to get this big guy. you got to keep the ball in on him. Don't let him get those big arms extended. We take a look at the numbers where he ranks in the American League. Well, how about that? First in home runs, first in RBIs, first in slugging, first in extra base hits. Good pitching matchup tonight. Left-hander Jose Quintana for the White Sox. And for the Cubs, it'll be Jeff Samarja still looking for his first win of the year, believe it or not. An ERA of under two without a victory. Yeah, it's becoming a, a bit of a saga now, isn't it, for Samarja? 0-3 despite the fourth best ERA in the National League. Run support has not been there for him. He's been very good against the Sox and his career, but has a losing record against them. Last year, he dominated them. Two-hit complete game shutout over at the cell. The Cubs swept the series last year in four games. We'll see what transpires this week. We'll be here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The Cubs and the Sox coming up next. Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. AT&T U-verse. AT&T U-verse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PIG-ATT. Rethink possible. Ford. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Welcome back to the ballpark. The White Sox and the Cubs will play two here at Wrigley Field tonight and tomorrow night. And then we'll head about nine miles south to U.S. Cellular Field for Wednesday night and Thursday night action. I mentioned in the open the Cubs swept the season series four zip last year. They outscored the White Sox 32 to 8. They did not trail in any game in 2013. And uh, this is actually a rivalry that goes back uh, quite a while. The White Sox uh, beat the Cubs four games to two in the 1906 World Series. The City Series actually started three years before that. And you had a lot of uh, exhibition games, uh, including the uh, Windy City slash Crosstown Classic that at one point featured Michael Jordan but uh, J.D. since 97 they've been playing for keeps. Yeah and it's uh, always fun for folks from uh, each side of town to rally around their club and 
We'll see more of that over the next four days. Ricky Renteria has got to be feeling better about the way his club is playing. Uh, not, you know, didn't pick up the win last night in that one run loss to the St. Louis Cardinals, but taking two out of three from the Redbirds. Quality of play has improved for the Cubs of late. The, the Sox pulled one out late yesterday. They had actually been scuffling a little bit. It's going to be fun because the White Sox. They score a lot of runs. They scored more runs than any team in the American League. But it's a pitcher's environment here tonight. Cold and windy. A couple of good pitchers on the mound too. White Sox come in pretty banged up. They have already had to endure a lot of injuries. We'll get into those as we move along. But let's check out their Southwest starting lineup against the right-hander Jeff Samarja. Yes, they have scored the most and allowed the most runs in the American League, but have hit under 200 their last five games. Diaz in center with Adam Eaton on the DL. Gordon Beckham, excellent numbers in his career against the Cubs. We mentioned Abreu, hottest hitter in baseball to start the season. Adam Dunn off to a good start. He gets a rare start in the outfield. Diane Viciedo is in right with Avi Garcia done for the year. Ramirez at short. Flowers off to a great start behind the plate. Marcus Semien plays third, and Quintana, the pitcher, bats ninth. Cubs defense brought to you by Kia. And you'll see Lake Bonifacio and Scherholtz patrolling the outfield. Olton Castro on the left side of the infield. Barney and Rizzo rock solid on the right side. Wellington Castile behind the plate for Alexis pursuing perfection. This is Jeff Samarja starting pitcher, excuse me, Jeff Samarja threw six starts. No wins yet, three losses. 198 ERA, good for fourth best in the National League. A lot of right handed bats in this White Sox lineup, just two left handed bats. Well, this lineup really suits him well. Jerry Meals is the crew chief, and he gets the plate for the uh, series opener. Paul Emmel, Tom Woodring, and Chris Siegel around the bases. Well, there you see the good news. Clear skies above. It is very chilly, however, and it should be a pitcher's night. If they can throw everything where they want to with yeah. the wind blowing in. And sometimes the dexterity of the field and the fingers when it's cold and windy like this becomes a problem for the pitcher. But, you know, I think to that end, it, it advantaged Samarja because he's got the plus fastball. He's the guy that can rush it up there at 96. You don't need a whole lot of feel to do that. So Deaza will lead it off. Samarja into the windup, and here we go, and a strike called. On a fastball at the knees. I will say I believe this is the first time I've ever worn a ski cap on Cinco de Mayo. One strike on Deaza. Yeah, it is May. And it's May 5th. <laughs> and it's 41 degrees. Is that the number 41? Wow. It feels like it's somewhere in the 30s. Probably what the wind chill is. Oh and two and the White Sox leadoff man. A lot of fat batting averages on this White Sox club to and not one of them. Scuffling a little bit. Beckham and Abreu to follow here in the opening inning. Dallas has got something in his eye. Fastball out over the plate, not where Castillo wanted it, and a leadoff single for Deaza. Yeah, they're trying to throw that two seam runner that they start in at the hitter's hip and then runs back to the corner. Deaza close to home plate, so this ball runs out over the middle and puts a pretty good swing on it. Jeff last time out for the first time this year failed to go seven innings. He went five and two thirds at Cincinnati allowed three runs got beat three to two. Beckham started the year on the DL sprained oblique missed the first 22 games. This is his 11th start. He's going the uh, the old school offensive lineman look with no long sleeve undershirt. Going with the uh, mind over matter approach. 
The pitch. Bounce to third, picked up by Old off balance throw, and they won't get anybody. And Deaza will move to third. Nobody covering second, but Beckham will hold it first. Fielder's choice for Beckham and an error on Olt. Yeah, probably trying to do a little too much there, and, and that's been an issue at times for Mike. And that's a real tough play, moving in to the center of the diamond, throwing back across the body, and a pretty speedy guy there, Deaza. He had to do it all over again, just throw that ball to first base and get it out. So trouble here for Samarja in the very first inning, and he has to face Abreu with two on and nobody out. Abreu leading the majors already with 12 home runs. Player of the month, rookie of the month in the American League, the first American League player ever to win those two awards in basically his first month in the big leagues. He takes up a lot of the batter's box and it's one foul right at the dish. Yeah, what, 6'3, 6'4, 255, 27 years of age. In really good knee situation. Last week or so, though, he has cooled off. Hit a couple home runs in their recent series against Cleveland. One strike the count on the big White Sox slugger. Another one. He's hit two off himself here in this at bat. It's early, but if he were to maintain his current pace, he would end up with the best at bat per home run ratio ever for a rookie. He's homered essentially one of every ten and a half at bats. So Marja needs a strikeout. Not going to get it though. That ball hit to deep right. It'll be caught by Sherholtz. Deaza will tag and score, and the White Sox have an early one nothing lead. Now we showed you the uh, <clears throat> the location on the Deaza base hit. How that ball drifted over the middle of the plate on Samarja. Brayu does strike out a fair bit, and I think you could probably get him to expand once you get ahead of him. And, and Samarja pretty much threw him a cookie there with two strikes. I don't think that's where he wanted that pitch to end up. I thought maybe they'd take a shot down in the dirt or way up about letter high. 35th RBI already for Abreu. And it's Adam Dunn. Beckham at first. One out in the inning and ball one outside. Final year of Dunn's four year contract. Over a thousand career games in left field for Dunn, but he has not played the outfield regularly in several years. He's out there tonight. Check to swing as he rolls one to Rizzo. Anthony will step on the bag with Beckham now at second, two outs. It's interesting when you look at the. White Sox lineup. All the high average hitters are down in the middle towards the end of the batting order. Seattle, Ramirez, and Flowers all putting up very robust batting averages. 330 for Viciato. Ramirez hitting 333. Flowers 345. Viciato with two outs. Swings and misses. Well, they were staring. At a five game losing streak and a sweep at Cleveland until Viciato hit a big game winning three run homer off John Axford in the ninth inning yesterday. One strike the count on him. Much one fastball after another so far here for Samarja. Here's the big swing of the bat by Viciato yesterday. They went two and seventeen against the Indians last year. They're four and three this season. Swing and a miss. Well, they lost ninety nine last year, so it's not as if they were close to being in contention. But when you lose seventeen games to one team, you really have no shot. And with the unbalanced schedule, you've got to 
do what you can to at least get close to breaking even. The dirt. Splitter. Well, of all the guys on both rosters, I think Samarja, having grown up in Northwest Indiana, understands this rivalry the best, along with Paul Konerko, who's been involved in it for a long time. Edwin Jackson has been with both clubs. Ground ball. Moving to his right is Darwin Barney, and that'll end the inning. If the White Sox get one. And the Cubs are coming up when we come back. Leadoff man gets a hit. Vinny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to JDRF. Vinny's and JDRF, they like Emilio Bonifacio a lot because he's come through quite a bit with that uh, leadoff hit. Junior Lake had the big game on Saturday. He's in left. Rizzo Castro. Castillo has been hot. Nate Sherholtz will play right. Alt trying to snap a little low for Barney and Samarja go eight and nine. Here brings us the White Sox defense. Dunn, Diazza, Viciedo in the outfield. Keep your eye on Adam Dunn. That could be an adventure tonight. Simeon Ramirez, Beckham, and Abreu third to first. Tyler Flowers behind the plate for our Lexus starting pitcher, Jose Quintana. One and two with an ERA of four. He's got a four pitch mix. Nice ball curve, cutter change. Really uses all those pitches as well. Six starts so far. Mostly quality work. Switch batter Bonifacio hitting on the right side. The run the Sox got was unearned because of the alt error. Simeon plays in on the grass at third. Bray who pulled in at first as well. The pitch bounced right to Marcus Simeon who looks it in before throwing across for the first out. Connor Gillespie's on the DL. This might take some time here. Jeff Keppinger's on the DL. Abasayo Garcia done for the year. Left shoulder surgery. Their ace, Chris Sale. Felipe Paulino, Nate Jones. Back surgery today. The list goes on and on. There's Sale. I think he threw today. Junior Lake looks at ball one. Obviously, sale a big piece for the White Sox, one of the best starting pitchers in the American League. Sox have a uh, 5.21 starters ERA, next to last in the American League. Two and zero now on Lake. He was the offensive hero for the Cubs in their three nothing win on Saturday. Three hits, including a game-winning two-run homer. 
Sale with his first bullpen session today. 30 or 40 pitches. Three balls, no strikes. I think if the conditions were different, Ricky Renteria would be tempted to turn late, loose here on 3 0. Oh. Taking all the way, it's a strike. Warm day with the wind blowing out. You want to take advantage of those hitters' counts. The guys wail away on 3-0. That's not tonight. Quintana is from Arjona, Colombia. Signed with the Mets originally back in 06. Mr. No Decision. Very indecisive. Seventeen no decisions last year. It set an American League record, and he comes back and strikes out Lake after starting three and zero. It's a cut fastball. You see Junior try to clear the hips, try to open up and drop the head on that pitch, but he just couldn't quite get it there in time. Montana's last start, he worked six innings, didn't walk a man, and struck out ten. He has good command. Strike called on Anthony Rizzo. Slugging almost 700 against lefties. And he hits a little ground ball on the right side. And it'll be the shortstop Ramirez in front of Beckham the second baseman to end the inning. Quintana goes one two three. It's one nothing White Sox after an inning. Second inning, Alexei Ramirez with 999 career hits steps in. That slider came back over the plate as Ramirez turned away. 0 and 1.
Hard hit ground ball right to Alt. The battle for the Crosstown Cup is on tomorrow night. The Cubs and Sox match up one more time. Here inside Wrigley Field. Tickets are still available. Get them while they last. Cubs.com for tickets. We'll bring up the catcher, Tyler Flowers. You mentioned some pretty healthy averages here in the middle to bottom of their lineup. Flowers at 345. That was after hitting a buck 95 last year and 256 at bats. He's hitting well over 500 when he puts the ball in play, and that's just impossible to sustain. But you ride it while you can. A couple of bounces to Alt this time. With five threes to start the White Sox second. Strikeout numbers are down for Jeff Samarja so far this year, and that's by design. He's trying to be more aggressive early in counts, pitching to contact to try to save that pitch count a little bit and allow him to stay in games longer. It's worked out, as I mentioned last time out, the only time so far this year he didn't go at least seven innings. You alluded to his complete game two hitter last year, May 27th, down on the south side. That's at this point, the best performance of his career. He will not get a shutout tonight. He could complete it. But that was as good as we've seen him. Ready for an 0 2, and he bounced that one way out in front of the plate. I guess the splitter in the dirt is better than the splitter in the seats. <laughs> that should be a bumper sticker. <laughs> There's better, another one. Better than a splinter in the seat, too. A lot of times this year he's had a hard time getting the feel for that split finger pitch. And, and I think, yeah, if you if you know if you're a little wary of making a mistake out over the plate, you might as well bury it, throw it down hard so you get the feel for it. 2 2 to Simeon, and he fouls back. Simeon, as a minor leaguer, was an on base machine. Very good strike zone judgment, tough to strike out. Good example there. <laughs> Fooled by the breaking ball, but able to stay back long enough to put a little 911 hack on it and stay alive. Back to the splitter. And he held up on that one. And he shook. Three different pitches off to get to that splitter, and I, I, I'm trying to guess along with Jeff here, and I'm thinking this was more of a, not so much that this is the pitch I should be throwing this guy in this count as it is. I just want to try to get the feel for that pitch. Two outs, nobody on, eight-hole hitter up, not a bad time to try to find it. Swing and a miss for his first strikeout, and settling in after giving up that unearned run in the first.
Yeah, prove it. This Wednesday when beer money hits the U.S. cellular parking lots. Join Kip Lewis for your chance to win some cold hard cash and be on beer money presented by Coors Light. That's Wednesday at 5 in the parking lots at the cell. Everybody bundled up tonight. This is Robbie Goldweather. And he will uh, sing the stretch. A little later on. He could still kick a 53 yarder in this kind of weather. No problem. Just to start a little lower. Starlin Castro had a seven game hitting streak snapped last night. And swings and misses. Hit 429 during the streak. Continues on in that four spot. Starlin going with the somewhat short sleeves underneath, even though he's got that Mother Superior. Mother Superior <laughs> look up top. Yeah. He chops one to his counterpart, Alexei Ramirez. Four up, four down for the left hander Quintana. The Cubs catcher Wellington Castile. So you, you said mind over matter, but I, I'm, I'm sure you pitched on more than one occasion on a night like this. Uh, you, you alluded to grip issues. We mentioned that generally on nights like this it should benefit a pitcher because of the conditions but how do you feel out there on the mound when it's it's not very comfortable for most people. Yeah as long as the wind you know the, the wind is more problematic than anything cold weather generally doesn't bother pitchers too much but when it's really windy it's hard to have the feel. Like Jason Hamill had some issues and just getting yeah in, in a sink last night and, and a lot just depends on what type of pitcher you are too if you're a guy that has to manipulate the ball if you throw a lot of breaking pitches you have to spin the ball that can be a little bit of a problem if you're a fastball changeup guy I think it's a little bit easier round ball again it's Ramirez to make the play and really I think it's, it's probably easiest on a guy like Samarja who's fastball splitter you know split finger pitch you put the ball between your fingers and pretty much throw it as hard as you can just pop it. So you're not turning the ball, you're not manipulating the ball all that much, and he's also throwing a 96 mile an hour fastball. That typically, he gets really good movement on. Nate Scherholtz, 100 plate appearances, and no home runs coming in. Notable because he hit 21 last year as he lays down a bunt. Barehanded play by Simeon, and he got him at first. What a play by Marcus Simeon to get Schultz. Had to be perfect, and you'd have to say he was.
on top, one nothing, thanks to Jose Abreu's sack fly there in the first inning. I had a chance to ask pitching coach Chris Basio for the Cubs what the plan was when facing Jose Abreu, especially for Jeff Samarja. And you saw there in the first inning, really attacked, got ahead 0-2 in the count, certainly a sign of a good hitter, but he said he was going to have him go high and inside maybe, outside, do something to get an aggressive hitter like that going after the ball, guys. Speaking of aggressive, Kelly, Jose Quintana came into that at bat 0 for 9 in his career, but put good wood on it and lined out to Scherholz. <laughs> He's pretty much giddy about that. He, he's going down the line looking into the White Sox dugout. I think somebody, I think he had a bet with somebody he was going to make contact. You ever seen a guy get that many fist bumps for making <laughs> it out? Who does he think he is? Jason Hamill? <laughs> that was great. It's Deaza. I'm all for 10. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Deaza bunts and it kicks foul. Remarkable to note that Alejandro de Aza finished second on the White Sox in home runs last year with 17. Adam Dunn hit 34. De Aza had hit 13 in his entire career going into 2013. 0 oh 2. Fly ball out to left where Junior Lake will take care of it. Wrigley Field celebrating its 100th birthday. Love the uh, 1929 throwbacks. Yeah, last night. Mm -hmm. Very sharp. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to get my hands on one of those. Typeface, I don't know the name of it, but it's what the Red Sox wear. A lot of teams used to wear mm -hmm. that for the, uh, the numbers on the back, and the stripes on the socks. Kind of a half button down. Beckham bounds one to Barney. The White Sox go down one, two, three for the second consecutive inning, leading the Cubs one nothing. Pink Out, presented by Advocate Healthcare in an effort to celebrate survivors and raise breast cancer awareness. 
We encourage all fans to wear pink to the game. All fans in the Budweiser bleachers will receive this unique pink Cubs t-shirt. Tickets are going fast. So get on board at Cubs.com. Get your Budweiser bleacher seats. Get a pink t-shirt. Come out and join us for Cubs socks. Mike Alt trying to snap an 0 for 12. Guess he couldn't decide on the uh, long or short sleeves, although it's kind of a compression sleeve on that throwing arm. Quintana's 0 1 is inside, one ball, one strike. Second time Quintana has faced the Cubs. Cubs beat him on May 27th of last year. That was the Samarja shutout. We'll play for Flowers. Quintana's had bad timing this year. His last two starts were against Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer. And now he draws Samarja here tonight. Had a pitch to hit there, a little bit of a hanging breaking ball. High in the air to center. That's a kind of ball you, a pitcher wants a hitter. To hit tonight. Wind blowing out, different story. And Katana has been more of a fly ball type pitcher, but he's got five ground ball outs tonight. Talking to Old before the game, and you know, he played at the University of Connecticut, so he played in a lot of cold weather. But he said, you know, that doesn't mean I liked it. People just make the assumption if you're from the Northeast, yeah, you're used to this, you like it. Nobody likes playing in this. Throwback uniform from last night is Barney. Looks at a strike. Make it on two. Playing Barney as an off field hitter. You see him pull plenty of balls, especially against a lefty with that cutter moving in. He can yank one down that left field line. Adam Dunn's way off the line and left. Whether they're moving Adam or not, I think in his mind, he's just not going to let Diaz get too far away from him. <laughs> Keep him in my sights. Ramey Humbert, thank you for the uh, nice note. McCullough is the font and for the uniform company. Mm. It's with the, the Red Sox numbers on the back of their home uniforms and what the Cubs had last night. I guess typeface, not font. I don't want to get a bunch of tat tweets. <laughs> Two outs. <laughs> you will anyway. I know. Now there's that good changeup. Quintana, not an overpowering guy, but. He's got a nice mix of pitches. He has a good curveball and then a real nice changeup. This is what I remember when I saw him last year. Changeup. Very effective weapon. It's Barney well out in front of that one. Looking to go nine up, nine down to start the ball game. Samarja so pops it up. Beckham has it. Quintana has not allowed so much as a base runner through three. It's one nothing White Sox.
hashtag Northside fan photo for a chance to have it appear later in tonight's broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. An unearned run for the Southsiders in the very first inning. Driven in by Jose Abreu on a sacrifice fly, and he will lead it off in the fourth. Yeah, kind of night where every single play takes on added significance. Abreu got a six year, $68 million contract. Over the winter, the largest total dollar contract in White Sox history at 392 his last four years. In the Cuban Professional League in over a decade there, 341. So of all the people surprised about what he's done here early on, he's probably the least surprised. Mm -hmm. Because he can hit and always has. Just Shattered his bat as he grounds out to Starlin Castro. Ten in a row now sent down by Samarjan. As we could say, 19 in a row for the two starters combined. Cubs shifting against Adam Dunn. The third baseman is now basically playing second. It's Mike Holt. In shallow right in between yeah. Rizzo and Barney. Actually, it's Castro over there at short. Now Holt out there at the rover position. So you move him, and that allows Barney and Castro to remain in their customary spots. I do think with all the shifting there needs to be a change in the scoring at some point just yes for sake of yeah. uh, clarification mm -hmm. you know if, if Dunn hits a ground ball to Alt, it should go 4 three even right. though Alt gets the assist right yes in my mind it should be you know, where, because you want to know where the ball was hit not necessarily who it was hit to. Two. Uncle My Shoe. Adams had some tough times since signing with the Sox. Off to a good start this year. There's. We'll get it right. <laughs> Flip second and third. Driven out in the deep right center. Right at the base of the wall, and Dunn will have a double. And he can make this park look very tiny. Has oh. always hit well here mm -hmm. at Wrigley Field. He just makes a nice smooth pass through this fastball from Samarja. He's not going to help it at all here today. That one hit hard, though. I mean. That's the kind of ball that might get out of here tonight. I think High is going to get knocked down unless the wind shifts. This Seattle. High topper, barehanded play by Samarja. Booted by Rizzo. Dunn's going to hold it third. Well, that was a heck of a play by Samarja. <laughs> Unbelievably athletic play. I don't know if Jeff's throw got to the dirt or not. Let's see. I mean, he does a nice job staying in, under control after making the barehanded play, and then he threw a bit of a sinker over there. I just don't think Normally, Rizzo was expecting yeah. it to be in that spot. He kind of spiked it, but it was it was catchable. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. It might go on yeah, uh, Rizzo if it does. 
That's his first error in 57 games going back to last year. Ramirez swings and misses. It's funny watching Adam Dunn in that play. Joe McEwing, the third base coach, was cranking his right arm trying to send Adam home, and Adam was like, Nope, I'm good here. Oh, two. Turbo sinker he just threw. One more just like it. Way upstairs with a heater or something hard moving away from him off the plate. You don't want to leave anything in the zone here. Might get away with it. That would not be the plan. Tough one to lay off. But he did. Pitch blown away. Two Cubs errors. Yeah, and tonight where runs are going to be hard to come by, as I mentioned earlier, every play takes on added significant added significance. We want to play a clean game defensively. This is where a pitcher can step up and bail out his teammate. Tip strike three. Two down. Dunn at third. Seattle at first and a strike. Flowers. Well we had a lot of rain in April. So should we say April showers did bring May, May flowers, flowers yeah. to Wrigley Field. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. OK. I'm going to let you say it. No I already did. Here's the 0 one. Late swing by flowers that time. Too bad we didn't have Ted Lilly pitching. Time Samarja did hit his spot. Flowers only able to pull it foul. Well, you know, Samarja has got a plus fastball, obviously, 95, 96 miles an hour. One of the best fastballs among all starting pitchers in baseball. Typically has very good movement on the fastball. So when you add location, when he's hitting his spots with that fastball, those are the games where he really dominates and sometimes doesn't need much other than his heater. Man, both the arm and glove side with that fastball, a little cutter, and then with the sinkers he threw, Ramirez were just filthy. One two on the way gets by Castile only this will advance done pointing at himself I think looking into the dugout saying that's on me. I 
might not have had a real good look at it. So a wild pitch allowing Vicieto to advance. Cubs get a break here. Well, you know, Adam possibly could have scored on the on the on the play where Anthony didn't catch the throw from Samarja. And here on the ball in the dirt, if he goes immediately, he scores easily. Just didn't get a good read on it. Big part of his game. Takes a little while to get that big body up to speed. So two and two now on Flowers with two in scoring position. Marge stays from the stretch. Bolt. Two in the inning. So he works around the error. And we head to the bottom of the fourth. Still one nothing. White Sox. Sergeant Gary Broden currently serving with Marine Air Control Group 48 here in Chicago 12 years of service he served with the second maintenance battalion fourth maintenance battalion third battalion fourth marine regiment and on board the aircraft carrier USS Carl Vinson great to have him here tonight. If the Cubs can dent Quintana's line tonight, all zeros except for a three in front of his innings pitched. They put one ball into the outfield to this point. And that was a lazy fly ball. That old hit last inning hasn't been a lot of sharp contact with this 25 year old left hander. Bonifacio came in at 321, actually the lowest average he's had all season. Getting off to that sizzling start. One pitch, ground ball to Beckham. Blake, a strikeout victim in the first. And Katana has established command of the strike zone, so he's got Cubs up there primarily in, in swing mode. And you mentioned the other day how the Cubs were. Doing such a nice job in terms of pitches seen. They, they still don't draw a lot of walks, but they've been working a lot of deep counts. Not so much tonight. But Ten outs on 32 pitches. Change up to start it. Keep 
Quintana has looked very comfortable pitching on this Wrigley Field mound for the first time. We probably overrate the idea of this guy's good here. He struggles in this park. If you're making pitches and you feel good, shouldn't matter where you pitch. Simeon was playing in, and that makes it a pretty easy play. He's committed six errors this year, but the reputation is that he is very capable. A utility type guy. Played a bunch of second base. He played there while Beckham was hurt. Yeah, I think certain style pitchers fit better in certain ballparks. I used to be one of sinker ballers here at Wrigley in the summertime with the wind blowing out and the, the lush grass on the infield. Shift against Rizzo and against the lefty. You see in the outfield, they're pretty much straight away. That is not uncommon to overshift on the infield and maybe even go the other way in the outfield. Fly balls and line drives, ground balls, guys have different tendencies. And big, strong guys like Rizzo almost never hit the ball on the ground to the left side of second base. I do usually it's a mistake and queuing off the end of the bat. If staying through the ball with an up the middle approach and they hit it in the air, it's more likely to go alley to alley or the other way. Just could not hold up. And Quintana dealing through four has been perfect. One nothing at South Side. Sportsnet for Blackhawks post game live. Go inside the locker room, hear from Coach Q, and get the breakdown on game three. Blackhawks post game live tomorrow after the big game. Pat and Steve we'll give you the lowdown. Eight, nine, and one for the visitors against Jeff Samarja. One nothing White Sox. Simeon. Slider strike. 
We'll see the Braves in Atlanta this coming weekend. Braves are still in first in the East, but they've dropped their last six in a row. They're not scoring many runs. And Freddie Gonzalez hitting the pitcher eighth tonight against the Cardinals. Aaron Harang hitting eighth. Ramiro Pena, the second baseman, batting ninth. Trying something different. It's not working. They're losing no. four nothing in the sixth inning. Can't blame them though. They scored one in each of their three games over the weekend against the Giants. O2 is low. Aaron Harang down four nothing in this ball game. Got hit hard last time out, and he had been unbelievably good prior to that. Braves with 10 runs in their last seven games, including tonight. Line towards center and a base hit. Well, guide out there in front of Bonifacio. And a tomahawk shot there by Simeon. Ten is probably disappointed. He probably wanted to swing the bat again after lining out last time up, but he'll be asked to bunt here. It's kind of the nature of that Braves club, isn't it? With you know they've got so many swing and miss guys with power, so you know they get the ball out of the ballpark a lot. But if they go into a little bit of a funk, there's going to be a lot of swings and misses. And a check on the runner, which is more about. Seeing what Quintana had in mind, and you saw he was about ready to square around as he gets the signs from Super Joe McEwing, the third base coach, Daryl Boston, over at first. There's the butt, it'll work. So Marge will underhand to Barney, that'll go one to four. And Quintana will get more fist bumps. Yeah, he's got, it out. he's got it going on, doesn't he? Uh, perfect game. Line out now. Successful sacrifice, but speaking of the high fives, uh, the Rockies are, are kind of thinking about whether they should be doing that right now. To see a virus going around the clubhouse. And no, I did not. The players have been encouraged to to wash their hands a lot because of the high fiving that goes on in this game. Fouled away. Maybe they'll just have to do phantom high fives. But the only virus they had was the hit virus. Tulowitzki's hitting, hitting what close to 400. Whoop! Got by everybody. You get it. I'm guessing a cross up there. I'm guessing Wellington was looking for a slider or a split because he was late getting after that heater. So the Cubs will have to bring their infielders in. Obviously, the signs are a little more. Secretive with a runner at second. You go through a series of signs. Keep the other team from picking up what you're doing. A one one. Hammered foul. And they can be as simple as, hey, we're going to go with the second sign or third sign, or we're going to go the first sign after a two. Uh, and sometimes other other guys like to get very complex with them. They'll, they'll base it on what inning it's in and how many outs there are. Whether it's the first, second, or third sign. Or what they're using as an indicator. Usually it makes sense to keep it simple to prevent the cross ups. One two on the way, and Deaza held. And Steele deciding to tag first and ask questions later. Nope. Started but stopped in time. Mars got a big strikeout last inning of Ramirez with a man on third and just one out. The way Quintana's going, that's a very big run down there. Tap back to Samarja. The flip to Castillo, an easy out. Simeon tag went on contact.
here there just don't panic. Realize you got plenty of time. Simeon had pretty much committed I suppose he could have tried to. Hit the brakes and. Trying to give the a chance to get to second. Yeah yeah that you know that's. That, that's a tough play and it's an instinct play you know normally when you're told to go on contact you just go. Sometimes you see a runner. Slam on the brakes and get in a rundown it's an easier decision to make when the ground ball is hit to the. You know one of the infielders a little slow roller back to the mound like that you're just not sure the guy's going to make a clean play. You don't want to quit on it and then have the pitcher mishandle it. And you don't score. There goes Diaz as he tries to get into the scoring position and he does. Slight hesitation. Castillo appeared to have trouble getting the ball out of his glove and a little bit of a collision out there and Diaz is slow to get up. Fourth steal this year for Diaz. He's been caught a couple of times and without this double pump they probably do get him. You see a little double pump and then the throw on the shortstop side. Oh, man. But Diaz's left arm got pinned beneath him. Yeah. yeah. He was, he he was out. Been he out. was out. That's probably worth taking a look at because the hands were tucked underneath. And right on cue, here comes yeah. Rick Renteria. It kind of looked like a penguin or something sliding across the ice. Boy, that really, well, I tell you what, he yeah, is gets, lucky he, he did not break yeah, his hand. He gets, he gets the shoulder jammed, he gets the hand rolling underneath. He gets the helmet to the coconut. They're going to get him. And ultimately, he's going to be out. Yep. So we have to wait for the official word. That should be a caught stealing two to four. And it will end the inning, but we've got to wait for New York to tell us so. How did he not suffer like four broken fingers? <laughs> no. Because he's tough. Watch that oh, left yeah. hand buckle. Yeah. Oh, and his right hand kind of well, it doesn't get underneath him, but it's off to the side. There's a definitive look at it right there. Clearly out. Yeah. That kind of belly flop he did really cost him time. He hits and just slows way down. I believe I saw the Cubs are seven out of 14 in challenges, mm -hmm. so this would get them over the 500 mark in that regard. He is out, and the inning is over. Challenge. Call overturned. And it's 1 0 White Sox as we go to the last of the fifth.
decides tonight's player of the game. Vote now. Log on to Cubs in game live on CSNChicago.com. It's brought to you by Comcast Business Class. Cubs still looking for their first hit and first base runner against the Southpaw Quintana and a strike on the inside corner. Before we get too deep into the broadcast tonight, and it's uh, I guess good that it's uh, White Sox and Cubs. We want to wish our good friend Tony Gennetti the best. And we hope to see Tony here at the ballpark still. So he'll do some part time work as Castro grounds out to Beckham. And Tony retiring after 33 years as a sports writer at the uh, Sun Times and has covered a lot of baseball in her career. One of our all time favorites. Well, congratulations. Yeah. One away, here's Castillo. You believe Tony did it for 33 years and never once did anyone say she was crusty? <laughs> Because that's kind of the adjective yeah. you use for yeah. most sports yeah. writers, yeah. usually in a fun way, but you know, like in an Oscar Madison kind of. Yeah, that never ever entered her world. She was always very happy to be at the ballpark. Is he a one? Swung on and missed. Cutters in, change ups away. The MO for uh, Quintana here tonight. He's got it all working. Getting a ton of ground ball outs. Sunday night game, maybe six or seven years ago. Ted Lilly took a no hitter against the White Sox into the ninth inning. Juan Pierre broke it up. I want to say it was uh, Gavin Floyd, maybe that night, who had a no hitter, maybe through five or six. The ball drilled out in the center, and it's caught by Deaza. By far the best hit ball. By a Cub batter tonight. A solid line drive off the bat of Castillo. Nice break on it out there by Deaza. He's playing really a step or two towards right center. Good break, good route. Two outs. And this isn't the only place. Minnesota and Cleveland are scoreless in the bottom of the eighth in Cleveland tonight. Tigers lead the Astros 1 0. They're in the eighth in Detroit. Toronto shutting out the Phils three zip after seven. That's shutting out the Marlins three to nothing. They're in the eighth. Pitcher's night so far, it looks like. Can't blame the weather in Miami. One and one on Scherholtz. Not only has Quintana been terrific, he's been efficient. This will be his 50th pitch, and we're already in the fifth inning with two outs. Yeah, it's, you know, it's so important to establish command early because if you throw strike one early in the game and show that you're around the zone. Hitters tend to get hitterish. I think, well, he's not going to walk people. He's challenging guys. And then you can actually take advantage of that. Just work the edges, throw the change up a little bit more frequently. Time he climbed the ladder with a fastball. I don't know if that was his intent or not. He hasn't done that much. Even on Sherholtz, two and two. Tana into his motion. This is his first three ball count. No, it's not. 
He was 3-0 on late. Yeah. Before he came back to strike him out in the first inning. That might have been the only other one. Payoff pitch is high. Yeah. Will work from the stretch. For the first time as he faces Olt. Three in a row up out of the zone. He got Nate to chase that first one. Foul. Hey, Steelers 0 for 2 when trying with Quintana on the mound, and Flowers has been good. He's thrown out 7 of 21, 33 percent. It's above league average. Wind has not let up. It's blowing straight in. As Quintana takes a breath. Pitches inside almost hit old. It's one and one. Yeah, so this is a situation with two outs in the inning. You would like to at least contemplate trying to steal a bag here to get into scoring position. But you know, given the numbers I just talked about and the fact that Nate's you know, not a speed demon, he's a good base runner. Holtz runs. Pitches a strike. The throw. In and out of the glove of Beckham. So it's one and two on Alt. The Cubs have a man in scoring position. Yeah, I like to play. You know, despite the numbers, got a guy out there who hasn't given up a hit yet. Tough to think you're going to start stringing hits together. Why not take a chance? He goes on first move. Would have been safe anyway. It's for redemption here for Michael. There's an error first, yep. yep. Leading to that run in the first inning. Flowers. It was a slowly hit ground ball that Mike charged, and the play was to first base, but he decided to go to second to try to get the force to there and made an errant throw. I think that's, you know, young players come to the big leagues. We talk about all the issues that they're confronted with and how they have to settle in it. I mean, situational defense may be the biggest one, just learning how to play the game, when to take the shore out, when to play with more of a sense of urgency to gamble. To back three two counts for Quintana and Holt stays alive. Yeah, there's this internal clock that you hear a lot about at this level. And a lot of that. It's calibrated, I guess, by experience mm -hmm. at well, this level. And the clock spins a little faster when you first come to the big leagues. Exactly right. Another 3 2 inside and back to back walks. Cooper, the longtime White Sox pitching coach, 
You want to know his opinion? You know what you do? <laughs> you ask him. And sometimes you don't even have to ask, no, I, and he'll give it to you. I played with Coop uh, <laughs> the AAA a long, long time ago. Fun guy. The Columbus Clippers together. The Yankee organization. Darwin Barney with two on and two down here in the Cubs fifth still without a hit. Very much in this game only down one nothing. That'll land a foul. Mm. To the White Sox bullpen. Would have been good for two. Well, Darwin's been uh, experimenting with contact lenses. So he's got some glasses on order, now prescription. Hopefully, they'll wrap around a little bit to help protect his eyes when he's wearing the contacts. Boy, a tough, a windy night like tonight. When you're new to contact lenses, I don't know if he's got them in tonight or not. AT and T U versus MultiView. It is Alt there behind Quintana. There he is. The lefty on an 0 1 inside. Samarge is on deck. I think that they're going to work around Barney per se. But if push comes to shove, Quintana could load him up and face the pitcher. A 1 1. It's 1 and 2. Certainly go after him now. Shorts, huh? Well, they've got those heat lamps above, but still pretty brave. Flowers has earned his keep here in this inning, blocking pitches with runners on base. Situation where with two outs and the pitcher on deck, a lot of times the eight hole hitter feels like it's his duty to go outside of the strike zone, maybe to try to drive in a run. Can't afford to chase that changeup down in the dirt. Well, he's gone to the limit. On the last three hitters, Sherholtz, Holt, and now Barney. First two walked. McDonald standing there just trying to read the situation. How aggressive is he going to be? The runners take off, and Barney fouls. Another 3 2. Ground ball to the shortstop Ramirez. He's got to throw to first and he gets the out there. Perfect game gone. But Quintana with a no no through 5 1 0.
game at uh, Revel Downtown Friday, May 16th. It's the second annual cookoff for cancer presented by Call One. Celebrity chefs will cook off self inspired ballpark fare served by Cup players. Guests will vote for their favorite chefs and dishes by tipping their Cubs server. Ultimately, all tips and event proceeds will benefit pediatric cancer research care and support a cause close to home for Anthony and his family to purchase tickets. It's Cubs.com slash cook. One strike on Gordon Beckham. Over two. It's done a fielder's choice slash error in the first inning. 0 and 2 the count. Perfect pitches from Samarja so far in this sequence. Two seamer running in and then a cutter to the outside edge. When we were younger, when we went sleeveless, we called it going boob power. Boob was yeah. famous for never wearing sleeves, no matter how cold it was. Just missed. Good try and pretty good take there by Beckham. Sets up a 2 2, and he got a piece of it to spoil it. One run in the game ended up being unearned. Of this throw to allow Deazi to get to third, and then he scored on the sack fly by Abreu. Yeah, a decision Mike Gold would like to have back, and a pitch that Jeff would like to have back too, that two strike offering to Abreu. But other than that, he's been rock solid. Foul. Going into action tonight, the entire National League East was over 500, including the last place Miami Marlins at 16 and 15. And they have come back to tie the Mets 3 yeah. 3 in the eighth. Another 2 2, and he got him this time. Marlins have the best home record in baseball. Strikeout for Samarja tonight. And blows it right by him. Abreu. Sack fly in the first. Ground out his last time. And he waves at strike one. He was a teammate of Yasiel Puig's in the Cuban League, and Puig did what Abreu has done. League Player of the Month and Rookie of the Month. First month in the big leagues, Puig did that last year in June. So Abreu, the first American League rookie to do it, and second player in two years overall in the majors. One and two. Well, with the damage he's done here early in his career, obviously pitchers keenly aware of his power. So he's going to have to make some adjustments going forward because my guess is he's going to get fewer and fewer pitches to swing at. His Wrigley Field debut tonight. The bat back in time, two and two. Strike three. 
Back to back K's for Samarja. Half of his strikeouts have been here in the sixth inning. Fastball reliant early in the game now as the game moves along, throwing more split finger pitches through a couple good sliders, too. Really worked over Abreu in this at bat. Face is done. As Alt will come all the way over from third to play shallow right once again. And low for a ball. It starts with that split finger grip. Four years with the White Sox. Dunn's numbers in terms of the rate stats, just not what they were when he was in the National League, mostly with Cincinnati, two years Washington, 44 games with Arizona. OPS in the National League over 900, but 733 as a member of the White Sox, two and one. He's back there now. His OPS up over 900 right now. The question is, can he sustain it? He will always walk. He'll always strike out. And he should hit a lot of home runs. The one exception was 2011, his first year with the Sox, and he hit just 11, almost 500 plate appearances, but he hit. 41 the year after that, 34 last year. Swing and a miss. Samar just strikes out the side, and the Cubs still looking for their first hit. Trailing 1 0 as we go to the bottom of the sixth. of the six guided tours of Wrigley Field include visits to the press box clubhouses dugouts as well as a chance to actually step on the field this must see Chicago attraction houses 100 years of history Wrigley Field tours are offered on both game days and non game days so visit cubs.com slash tours to book yours today you smell a leadoff hit here why not deep to left for Samarja that smells pretty good and the Cubs on the board in terms of hits their first of the night and the tying run is already in scoring position. Third career double. That's kind of ironic. But 
to hit a couple of balls hard tonight. Wellington Castile lined out. Now Samarja with the leadoff double. We got the right man. Boy, that's a pretty looking swing. That's legit, no doubt about it. Head right on it. Got the right man up there to get him over. Bunted by Bonifacio. Quintana to first. Just got him. That'll go one to four. Samarge is at third. A couple of shots to get him in now. Yeah, I like the play. I like Bonifacio pushing that ball, trying to get a base hit as opposed to just squaring around and dropping down a sacrifice. A little firmer gets it out past Quintana. He might get his base hit. So this, this is interesting here. Junior Lake strikes out a ton. Has to realize the situation here and be willing to cut down on the swing to make sure he puts his ball in play, especially if he gets down in the count. Infield in, trying to protect a one nothing lead, and Lake did not cut down. Strikeout is a big enemy here if you're Junior Lake. You know, you've got to be aware of the situation. Among players with at least 70 plate appearances, he has the highest strikeout rate in baseball, over 40 percent. That's going to get it done. Dunn has to backpedal and will not even take a shot at Samarja, who will score. Sack fly the line out, 1-1. One, one. Nice execution there. Ironic, the pitcher hits. As the extra base hit, then the two position players play a little small ball. Bonifacio gets him over and Light gets him in. Done retreating as he made that catch. No chance to make a throw home. Two outs, nobody on. A strike to Rizzo. Lead off double by Samarja, and he scores two batters later. Tie the game. Kind of like a little league game, a high school game where the pitchers do everything. The pitcher. And the Cubs are done in the sixth, but a couple of boxes they checked off. First hit of the night, and eventually the first run for the home team. 1 1.
A 1 1 tie as the White Sox bat here in the seventh inning, and Diane Viciato takes ball one inside. Robbie Gold, Bears kicker, is in the booth with us. This is Bear Weather. That's the easy line, I guess. Welcome back to Wrigley. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm looking down the press box here, and you guys are one of the only ones with the window open. Huh? Oh, yeah. It's all about the elements for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we're tougher than yep, all the rest. Yep. That's just the way we. That's just the way we roll. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Robbie? Everything's good. Uh, yeah, I've been busy. It's good to be here. Uh, good to be back throwing out the first pitch. And, uh, I mean, it's nothing like a crosstown rivalry. One, one to Viciato. And he swung over the top of a sinker at 95. One and two. Talked a lot tonight about what it's like to pitch in weather like this. You are incredibly accurate no matter where you kick, but especially... Home games in December and January. Um, why is that? Just, it's just playing in the elements. You know, yeah. these guys have been actually, if you think about the winter, uh, realistically, this spring has not been much better for these guys. So they're getting used to playing in it. Um, you know, it's kind of neat to see both teams obviously being in the same city, playing in the same weather, but uh, dealing with the elements as well as they have tonight. I mean, you've had three really well hit balls. Pitchers are playing unbelievable tonight. Even Jeff Samarja hit a hit a really he's, he hit a rope to the outfield a little bit ago and helped himself out and tied it up 1-1. Struck out the side in the sixth. There's Viciato down one and two. So you know, foul. we can talk a lot about pitchers having to be honest with their manager. Manager comes out, you get tired, you get left in the tank. Does it ever come to the point where you're asked at the sideline, hey, you got this, you're good? I mean, do you, do you? As a kicker, I'm always, there's a lot you, of you always you know, say I'm good my, my yeah. 10 seconds of fame, I'm empty. That's all I got. Uh, no, you know, it's pretty neat. Like, some of the things that pitchers have to go through that I think kickers have to go through is, you know, they got to keep their hands warm, you know, to make sure they get their pitches in that they need to and feel the laces and throw them the way they need to. Uh, there's sometimes in night games like this where I could feel my toes at all. So, uh, yeah. Here's your first pitch. Usually you do it with your feet, but uh, let's see the, the throwing motion here. Oh, yeah. That works. I read the report. Low and away Stay from down, Adam yeah. Dunn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well executed. Here's Ramirez. 0 for 2. He's grounded out and struck out. Uh, okay, shoes. You've been in the league for a while. Have. Um, you always had the same type of shoe if you had experimented because I look at a lot of kickers they have different you know right foot different shoe than the left. Yeah What's I've always had Nike kicking uh, soccer shoes so uh, okay. we usually have a longer stud on the left foot than we do the right foot in bad weather games or late in the year. And on the hands and Alt will pick it up and then on turf what do you wear like in a dome. I wear the same same shoes okay. uh, all the whole time so uh, that doesn't change. Uh, I know some guys like uh, Jason Hansen, he wore uh, a football shoe, like a wide receiver shoe on one side, and then the other side he wears kicking shoes. So um, everybody has their own little different things that they do. Uh, for me, I just try to keep it as consistent as possible. It's worked well for you. So you know after the game, the coaches shake hands. The quarterbacks always seek each other out. Do the kickers look for each other after the game? Yeah, we usually fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're so tough. <laughs> Who's your guy? You got a guy? Uh, somebody in the division? Uh... You know, I, you I know really, well and I've really enjoyed playing against uh, Jason Hansen. You know, playing for 22 odd years or whatever it was, uh, it was pretty awesome to play against a guy to see him score 2,400 points and be as solid as he was year in and year out. One and one on Tyler Flowers. Pitchers duel tonight, game one of four. We'll be back here tomorrow night and then down to the south side Wednesday and Thursday. The 1 1 flowers high in the air, but playable Not tonight. Junior Lake makes a catch. Here we go, Robbie, with the stretch. Tonight's guest conductor for Take Me Out to the Ball Game, Chicago Bears kicker Robbie Gold. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some.
peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I ever get back. Let me root, root, root for the Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old And then leads off the bottom of the six with a double to left and comes around to score the Cubs run. Pretty impressive work by Jeff Samarja dominating on the hill and he's been the best hitter for the Cubs so far tonight. And I'd have to say as we check out Samarja's line, we often get asked to. Uh, your favorite stretch guests and singers. I'd have to put Robbie Golden. Mount Rushmore of a stretch. <laughs> I mean, always a fascinating interview. Knows baseball. Yeah. Yeah, that half inning went kind of quick. Great guy, great kicker. And he didn't hedge. Line and caught by Ramirez. Would have been easy for the Bears kicker to kind of, you know, not jump on in one of the team's bandwagons, but mm -hmm. I like that he. Cub guy tonight. I like that. People don't like hedgers. What honesty. Right. One ball, no strikes to Castillo. Thirty three thousand one hundred forty six. Chilly night, but it's been a whale of a ball game to this point. And yeah, we're set up for a dramatic finish here as we get into the late innings. Hector Rondon has pitched three days in a row, so he's not available tonight. Down the middle, two and one. Both teams' fans are getting into it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Stirring it up. Hitters count here for Castillo. It's three and one. Let's see what he gets. Pitch that he liked, but he was only able to 
Bounce it foul past third. Yeah, three and two. Three one change up from Quintana. Even in these conditions, didn't want to give in to Castillo. He put a pretty good pass at it, but he's out in front just a little bit. Hard on his swing. A little dip of the back shoulder. That stays in the zone longer, finishes high. Ability to take that low ball and get it airborne with authority. 3 2 is on the way, and we'll do it again. Third walk surrendered by Quintana. And no walks in his last two starts. Three matches his season high for a game. It's over in Detroit. Tigers shut out the Astros 2-0. Foul tip. He's pitching for the Tigers tonight. Next Scherzer went mm. eight shutout. To get the win. Much of a surprise there. He's four and one. Jared Cozart pitched really well. Seven innings, one iron run, and he gets saddled with his third defeat. He's one and three. Joe Nathan got the save. Detroit 18 and nine. Houston drops to 10 and 22. Back. How about that game in Pittsburgh tonight? Giants and the Pirates are nine to nine in the seventh. Think about all this good pitching that's going on in baseball tonight. Matt Kane was supposed to start that game, but he's on the DL. Remember, he was scratched last week after cutting his finger in the process of making a sandwich. Strike two, it's one and two. Yeah, I think they're going to institute a peanut butter and jelly policy only. The Giants clubhouse. On a sandwich, you have to cut something. You have to get the clubhouse guy to do it for you. One two pitch. Sure holds checked. Did not go all the way around. Good call by Chris Siegel. In the third. He's new, eh? Recognize that name. Yeah. We've seen Tom Woodring as its second tonight. A few occasions early this season. But he's newish as well. Yeah. Meals and Emil are the veterans on this crew. In the air to left, Dunn drifting over near the line makes a waist high grab. And then there are two outs. And the flare spinning away from Dunn, he's able to track it down. He had a cameo in the uh, Matthew McConaughey movie. Dallas Buyers yeah. Club. He played the bartender. Yeah. yeah. 
and a financial stake in the production company. Now I knew he was in it before I saw it, so it was easy to identify him, but I heard some people saw the movie, then found out he was in it, and they didn't recognize him. Well, we thought it was Will Ferrell. The 1 0 pitch. Uh, 2 0 on Mike Olt. Ball handcuffing Flowers. If that ball's in the dirt and kicks that far away from Flowers, Castillo maybe advances because you'd see, you know, anticipating you see the ball in the dirt, but this ball just below the knees of Olt. Castillo, the runner at first, two outs were in the seventh and a 1 1 deadlock. 3 and 0. Oh. Braves coming back on the Cardinals. They're still down, but it's 4 3 as Atlanta bats in the bottom of the eighth. The pitch. At the green light, and this ball will end up out of play as the wind will really push it back. Romero Pena, I mentioned hitting ninth tonight, and he's hit a home run. On the ground is short. Ramirez has had a busy night as he feeds Beckham at second, and we'll head off to the eighth. It's still the Cubs one and the White Sox one. Cubs and Sox. Jeff Samarja back out on the bump, and boy, is he just doing it all tonight. Giving up only three hits, struck out six, and of course, the double he hit turns into the Cubs' lone run. And Wellington Castillo actually said coming into this matchup, nobody he wanted out there starting the series more than Jeff Samarja. The intensity that this rivalry entails, he says, is the epitome of that guy. He'll do anything to win. He is such a fierce competitor, and he actually went on to say, guys, He's never really played with anybody he thinks that hates losing more than Jeff Samarsha. And that says a lot coming from Welly, who's clearly played with a lot of really good ball players. Thanks, Kelly. I want to ask you a question after this first pitch. Mm -hmm. Simeon takes a strike. Hey, Kelly, uh, we could feel the wind up here. How does it feel down on the field level? I don't know how to say this without sounding horrible. It's miserable down here. Okay. It's Just wanted awful. to confirm. But maybe, you know, the San Diego thing made me weak. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, JD said it. Even if you're from the Midwest, you know this yeah, is that's no fun. It's no fun. Whether nobody really loves playing it. It's a three dog night. JD, I'm glad that both you and I put on the ski caps for tonight. Oh, God, so I'm not yeah, the only yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> one and two on Simeon. So three dog night. You got to explain it because there's some night, fans yeah. who are too young to remember the yeah. band, and the, and the three dog night is basically what? It's the uh, I believe it was the Argentinian indigenous people, some people that when it was really cold, you know, nomadic type folks right. would curl up with a dog to stay warm at night. And when it was really cold, it was a three dog three night. Dog night. <laughs> See, I have that every night, whether I want it or not. <laughs> Ronald Belisario is up in the Sox bullpen. Better look this up on the Google machine. Well, you're right. I mean, uh, the details may be fuzzy, but I think no pun intended. According to uh, Wikipedia, it was the indigenous Australians okay. on cold nights would customarily sleep in a hole in the ground whilst embracing a dingo, which is a, a wild dog. And on colder nights, they would sleep with two dogs. And if it was really cold, it was a three dog night. Jordan Danks will hit for Quintana. So 95 pitches. And I suppose we could ask Robin tomorrow or somebody may after the game if this were an American League game, would Quintana have come back out for the bottom of the eighth? Now this is the spot and I don't agree with it in general but this is the spot some American League managers point to to say it's easier to manage in the National League. Well here you just pinch hit for your guy. Yeah well but yeah. this is the it's rare so. exception I think that makes it easier. Well and for me this isn't a slam dunk pinch hit situation. A lot of people say well you got to pinch hit you're in a tie game it's in the eighth inning. Well the way Smarge is going along here. With one out in the inning, nobody on. Unlikely the Sox are going to be able to build an inning here. Now they may prove me wrong. You don't know what you're going to get out of your bullpen. They've been better as of late. They got off to a, a horrid start. Yeah, and I'm not saying this is a bad move. It's, it's like so many other moves in baseball. It's not black and white, it's gray. Fly ball foul. I'm just saying you could defend. Letting Quintana bat here, whereas a lot of people would say, Ventura, you're nuts. You got to hit for your pitcher here. Thanks. will get a new bat. He's trying to snap an 0 out of 16. Side. It's three and two on him. Smarja has yet to walk a batter. Yep, he just got a rear back and turn loose a fastball here. Started at the middle of the plate. A little running action towards the outside part. And try to be too fine. Oh, oh. strike three. A tough assignment to come off the bench anytime when you're facing a pitcher like Samarja. The way he's going right now, and the fact that it's up 38 degrees out, it's a real tough assignment. That's a perfect pitch. Plenty of the plate down around the knees. Thanks, thought it was in. It wasn't. Three dog night conversation. Tweeters want to know if you've ever been to Spain. Kind of like the Beatles. <laughs> I've been to Shambhala. Oh, and two on De Aza. This is pretty interesting the way this game has gone, the way. Quintana started, and now the way 
Samarja has picked up here. He handed him the baton almost, yeah. Rizzo will take it himself. And Samarja will jog off the field in a 1 1 tie as his team tries to get its first lead of the night. every Sunday night for your chance to own one of a kind game used Cubs items and this week's auction will feature the 1929 Cubs throwback uniforms worn the last night go to Cubs.com slash authentics to bid on these jerseys and other unique game used items Ooh, that's a must have hey who do you mean I'm gonna be fine who do you me fine who do you fine here's Ronald Belisario of the uh, auction right after the game Relief pitcher to work yeah. off the outside corner to Barney. All right, interesting spot here. You know what Robin did? He pinch hit for his pitcher. Samarja is on deck. It's a tie game at the moment. He's gone eight innings, 107 pitches. Neither bullpen has any action at the moment. Yeah, I think you know this is a combination of factors. One, that Samarja is so good on the mound right now. He's as good right now as he's been all game long. He's got the only hit in the game for the Cubs. He's pitched his butt off for Renteria so far this year and doesn't have a win yet. So you know, I'm sure the conversation went down in the dugout. Hey, you're up over 107. You're at 107. Um, how are you feeling? Jeff probably said, hey, man, I'm great. I'm strong. It's a cool night. Let me go. Side on Barney. Well, I guess there are two ways to look at it, depending on what Barney does. <laughs> Jeff just looked into the dugout and kind of moved his shoulder as if to say to his teammate, should, should he have let it hit him? Easy for you to say, Jeff. 2-2. Two -two, chop foul. If you want to get some arge of the win, the question is, is it better off he hits and then continues pitching or to have a pinch hitter for him here? We'll find out. In a perfect world, Barney reaches and Jeff can bunt him over. Sario, a lot of sinkers. It's a lot of ground balls. Full three and two. Called strike three. Darwin trying to coax a walk on a nasty pitch. 
below the knees, outside corner, right at the knees. You know, people say, man, you can't take Paul third strike. He thought it was ball four. Yeah, I and mean, that's probably a routine ground ball if you swing at it. Back to Belisario, two outs. So Samarja will at least start the ninth on the mound. Here comes Bonifacio. Longest a cup pitcher has gone so far this year, seven and a third innings. And it was Samarja on the 23rd against the Diamondbacks. It was the birthday game. Diamondbacks scored five in the ninth to win it. But it does tell you about uh, the era we're in, doesn't it? This for the Cubs is their 30th game of the year, and this is the first time they've had eight innings out yeah. of their starting pitcher. Mm -hmm. And it's not uncommon. Eight games are definitely a rarity. Three and zero, oh. three and one. Three and two. Oh, sorry, one of those guys, even when he throws the ball up in the zone, he can get a little sinking action. Chopper right side charged by Beckham, and he'll flip to Abreu in time as Bonifacio slams his helmet down in disgust. Ninth inning around the corner, tied at one. the competition host your best customers and guests in a private suite at Wrigley Field the new vein investment suites can accommodate anywhere from 15 to 55 guests and include food all you can drink beverages and parking to book your premier experience at the ballpark it's cubs.com slash suites 
Starter back out for the ninth. In a 1-1 tie. 2-3 and 4 starting with Beckham in a strike. There have been into today. About 900. 20 games in baseball. There have been 16 complete games thrown. Yeah, what, what's the. Uh, we'll look it up here. See the, the league leader from last year. Not hit very hard. Castro has some time though, and he gets back up. As promised earlier, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game and in the future. Hashtag Northside fan photo for a chance to have your. Pick shown in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Adam Wainwright led the National League last year with five complete games. Ball over on a Brayu. Neil Ramirez is the righty. Wesley Wright is the left hander. Yeah, and there's obviously a lot of reasons why complete games have gone down. Sensitivity to pitch count, trying to keep pitchers healthy. And you'll know, go way back. Um, 50s and 60s, maybe to a lesser extent in the 70s, but you know, it used to be your starters were clearly superior pitchers to your bullpen guys. So you know the bullpen guys were just there when starters were fatigued or just having one of those days where they're getting knocked around um, with you know, more specialized roles in the bullpen and modern bullpen usage just kind of changes that dynamic a good bit. Three and one. They used to be, and I'm, when I say used to be, I'm going back quite a ways. I think the thinking was, if I had my one of my top three starters on the mound, even if he was struggling, I'd prefer to have that guy out there than my best option in the bullpen. That's no longer the case. Going in with some heat here on the three-one, and it misses. And Samarja with. His first walk. First base runner since the fifth for the White Sox. See how they shift here, JD, uh, with Dunn. Remember, they had Alt go over to right. But you can't do that here with a man on. Pitch. No, I remember last year, uh, sometime around mid-season, I guess it was, Adam was hitting a buck fifty or something, and he decided to start taking some shots the other way. It's Chris Bazio. Yeah, and if you do that, even a, a handful of times, it gets in the scouting report. Yeah, or even even just. And if you completely abandon ship and don't have anybody on that side of the infield, then you know you can just kind of chop one that way and put the winning run in scoring position. It's over in Atlanta. The Braves lost again. They did come back, but dropped a 4-3 decision. To St. Louis Cardinals back over 500 their second straight win and the Braves have now lost seven in a row. And we'll. Be at Turner Field Friday night. Here's the 1 0. Good pass at that one by Dunn. One and one.
Ouch. Oh, my goodness. It has to hurt on a night like tonight. Get him in the foot. Yeah. Looks like he's all right. Cut fastball right down off the top of his foot. Maybe he caught that little flap on the shin protector. Be pitch number 120. Ray with a very short lead. So Margin will throw over anyway. I notice on the right sleeve there, DJR. In the White Sox uniforms this year, honoring the memory of David Reinsdorf, the son of White Sox owner Jerry Reinsdorf, passed away in March. Two and two, I'm done. Pitch. That's what makes Adam Dunn Adam Dunn. A lot of guys in his spot, home run hitters, they'll flail at that pitch, but he generally doesn't. He'll swing and miss, but he swings and misses it a lot of strikes. Right, yeah, he doesn't, <laughs> doesn't expand too much. Maybe up above the hands, you might get him to chase. Strikeout candidate here, so Robin probably won't send a Brayu, but we'll see. Not going. And Dunn pops it foul. Sniff that out. Took that splitter like he was looking for it. Back to back walks, his first two of the ball game. And once he fell behind Abreu, he didn't want to give in to him, and then Dunn, just a guy who's always been able to work a walk. And Robin Ventura is going to go with a pinch runner at second with the go ahead run now in scoring position. Moises Sierra just joined the roster. It was White Sox debut yesterday, scored the tying run as a pinch runner, claimed off waivers from Toronto on Saturday. Here's Viciedo. By the way, this is a career high 122 pitches made by Samarja's previous high 120 on September 8th. Yeah, this not going according to plan for Ricky Renteria sending Jeff out for one more inning. I am sure he was thinking, maybe, you know, if he can get through this inning quickly. It's in a tough spot now. Inside on Viciedo, ball one. Viciedo came up with the big home run yesterday in Cleveland as the White Sox snapped a four game skid. Pitch. Slider strike. Lindstrom is up. Lindstrom got the save yesterday. And a ground ball to second. Barney the flip. Castro the turn. Inning over. A 
score 6-3, and we'll head to the bottom of the ninth. Cubs will try to win it. Tied at one. Icon Matt Bat for your iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry 10, or Windows Phone 8. Get score stats, highlights, live audio, and more. Text that bat through an 826 or visit Cubs.com for details. Well, one of the uh, possible key moments in this game are Xfinity high speed action. This is where replay came in handy as Alejandro de Aza called safe at second on a stolen base attempt, but they went to New York for the review and he was called out and ended. That threat. Sierra stays in and plays left. Done. Perhaps his first baseman mitt. And Chris Coughlin will make his Cubs debut. Batting for Lake. Recently came up to replace the DL'd Ryan Sweeney. Belisario, second inning of work. And he'll be looking to take that sinker. Line it over Ramirez's head out there shortstop. Check that. This is not his debut. He did hit. Uh, last night. Boy huge double play for Jeff Samarja to. end the top half of the ninth if he doesn't get it I don't think he finishes that inning. Two and one. Yeah I would agree. Tonight, Coglin pinch hit against the Cardinals in the seventh and grounded out. And he hits a ground ball this time to Beckham. Short throw to Dunn. And one away. Yeah, and that's frequently what happens to a left handed hitter when you try to pull the sinker from Elisario. Ground ball to the right side. Outside ball one. And a base hit against the shift. Something he does not do often, and that is hit the ground ball on the left side. Yeah, as and you said. Yeah, it just it almost never happens with a big left handed slugger, but I think, you know. He's been hitting the ball in the middle of the diamond a lot more this year, and just with Belisario sinker, you know, this is a even with Rizzo up there, it's a fairly predictable outcome. I'm surprised they shifted as much as they did with Belisario out there. Castro. 
10 10 Giants and Pirates. Pirates keep blowing uh, leads. Blown save for Mark Melanson. The 0 1 in the hole. Going to be a tough play. Ramirez will throw to first. He got him as Dunn stayed on the bag. I did not think Ramirez was going to get Castro, but he did. And Ramirez, Ricky Renteria will come out. Let's see. Let me see if the big fella comes off the base. Looks like, oh man, that is close. Well, if I had to, on that first look, I would say safe. But I don't know if I could say it with enough conviction to overturn the original call. Looks to me like Adam was off the bag when Castro touched the bag, but it's really hard to tell. Doesn't it look like Castro gets there right before he comes back down. Now, Renteria has a challenge because he had a call overturned earlier. This is kind of a no brainer to challenge this one, but is there enough supporting mm -hmm. evidence to overturn it? Right, and that's kind of the fuzzy area that I'm noticing with this replay review because, again, there, there's been a number of calls where your best guess is one thing, but to overturn it, it's supposed to be clear and convincing evidence, and we've seen some overturn now where I'm, I'm hard-pressed to say that it's clear and convincing, so this may go the Cubs' way. And while this is going on, some medical attention being paid to Adam Dunn out there at first base, maybe strain something reaching for that ball. Our longtime head athletic trainer, Herm Schneider, out there along with Robin Ventura. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I just can't tell. It, it exactly. doesn't get clearer, yeah. unfortunately. I think he tweaked that right foot or ankle. But I'd say this is a pretty important call. It's mm -hmm. either runner at second, two outs, or first and second, one out. The next batter will be Castile. Is his ear bleeding? I think he's got one of those hand warmers and he's just putting it on his oh, ear. Oh, okay. Taking a good long look on replay. Now we're getting to the point where we're parsing whether or not uh, the spike still had contact right, right, with the right. bag. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and as you've mentioned a number of times, uh, at least our understanding, right, that the intent of replay was to overturn egregious calls to make sure there was no really bad calls that went, you know, unchecked. Tom Petty was right. The waiting is the mm -hmm. hardest part. And we will have an answer. And the call stands. It's kind of like the, the, the not guilty verdict. It's not innocent. It's just right. not guilty. Yeah. So, yeah. He might have been safe, but... Beyond a reasonable doubt, no. So here's Castile with a chance to win it as Rizzo is standing at second base. Two outs here in the ninth. Swing and a miss. Looking fastball, got a fastball, but just not in a place where he could do anything with it. Steele trying to end the ball game. Belisario trying to get this one into extras. The 0 1 bounced foul over the dugout. The White Sox outfielders cheat in just a little bit so they have a chance on a line drive base hit to throw Rizzo out at home plate. 
it's, it's two outs in the inning, so they have to be careful that they can retreat and catch a deep fly. Conditions really help them in that regard. Tough to drive the ball over the heads of the outfielders here tonight. Battle time for Castillo down 0 2. Pitch, and he struck him out. And we will go to the 10th inning from Wrigley Field. Well, a lot of uh, umpires at home probably had an opinion on this. In New York, they said out. by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Well, just to be thorough, we'll take one last look. Ball is in the glove. So that's not the issue. It's just hard to tell if the uh, spike on that Adam Dunn shoe is on the base. As Castro gets there and again just could not find conclusive evidence to overturn it. Coglin will stay in and play left after hitting for Lake. And Neil Ramirez has averaged over 94 with his fastball with a really good slider here early on. Will take over on the mound. So yep. Samarjic. <laughs> can't get a win and can't even get a complete game as he goes nine <laughs> innings tonight. It's becoming a. Interesting to say the least this quest for Jeff to get his first win despite so many good starts. That's his ER right now, but a buck fifty. Now there is no crying in baseball, so Grinnan Barrett. You could take solace in the fact that he knows he's doing his his job, his piece. Hey, it's Ramirez versus Ramirez. Yeah. Spy versus spy thing going on here. Neil to Ooh. Alexei, and he goes with, I believe, his first curveball in the big leagues. That was a hammer there. Old fashioned over the top 12 to 6 curveball. Different wrinkle from Ramirez. Popped him up. So makes a catch. Mentioned it earlier. Worth repeating Hector Rondon. It's pitched three days in a row. It's deemed unavailable by Ricky Renteria before this one. I guess it's always subject to change if you end up playing 16 innings. Highly unlikely. And he'll be in this game. Lowers fouls.
White Sox one and one in extras. The Cubs are one and two. Their first two games of the year into extras. Cubs outfield playing uh, no doubles. Very very deep. The only way to get it over their heads is to hit it into the seats. White Sox lead the all time series 49 45, but the Cubs swept them last year. Four zip. Fouled out of play two and two. He outscored them 32 to 8 in those four ball games. Candlestick Park in San Francisco back in the day, they used to give fans the quad of candlestick if they stayed for an extra inning game. Cold conditions there. The fans that are still here, they, they deserve something. Yeah. yeah. And a hearty bunch tonight. A nice weapon that we had not seen. Handful of appearances from Ramirez. This upper 70s curveball. We had seen the, the slider in the low to mid 80s. There's Paul Canerco, his final week against the North Siders as he'll retire following the season. He's on deck. Swing and a miss. There's the slider from Ramirez. A one two three top of the tenth. One one. Cup continues on Comcast Sportsnet. Edwin Jackson will take the ball against Hector Noesi. As the Cubs and White Sox fight for city bragging rights. Coverage starts at 6.30. Live from the friendly confines, Cubs and White Sox. Tomorrow at 6.30 here on CSN.
lefties on Wednesday night from the south side Travis Wood and John Danks and then Jake Arietta, who is really good in his season debut against the Cardinals against quite a story Scott Carroll in a couple of starts have been terrific for the White Sox. Jake Petritska. He's been a ground ball machine this year. No wins or losses a 204 ERA throws a lot of two seam fastballs slider and a change up. Elisario the sinker baller was good for two innings allowed one hit. A couple of punch outs. Ground ball toward right Beckham will field it in the grass and a good throw to Dunn. Pretty good range, gobbling that one up. Alt has gone 0 for 2 with a walk. The pitch. In there, strike one. White Sox scored in the very first inning, an unearned run. The Cubs got theirs in the sixth. And it was scored by the pitcher, Samarja, after he doubled to start the inning. Walt tried to end the game and missed it 0 and 2. Broke his bat as he pops to Ramirez, the shortstop. Ryan Schlitter is up. And his first major league win a couple of days ago. And Valbuena will hit for Barney. Valbuena to hit here. Kalish is on deck. To hit for Ramirez. One and makes the third out of the inning. We may see Ramirez go back out to pitch. Five hits combined between these two teams, and we're in the bottom of the tenth. It's starting to feel like one of those games where <laughs> you might argue that. They should start at the inning with a man on second base. <laughs> and like college football yeah, overtime. Yeah. Put the ball to what is it? 25, 30 mm -hmm. yard line. Mm -hmm. Tritschka born in Northfield, Minnesota. The pitch. Found back our way. Albuena oh, had a couple of hits, a couple of doubles in the ball game last night. Close to good numbers against the Sox in his career. Tall right hander back in a 1 1. And it'll be caught by Deaza, which will take us to the 11th. Pitchers have had the upper hand all night in a 1 1 tie.
White Sox got an unearned run. Gordon Beckham with a bouncer to Mike Holt. He decided to throw to second. Ball got away from Darwin Barney. That allowed Deazi to advance, and he would eventually score on a sack fly by Jose Abreu. But in the sixth inning, Samarja did it with the bat. Cubs' first hit of the night off Jose Quintana, and Junior Lake would knock in Samarja with a sacrifice fly. Yeah, here comes uh, Brian Schlitter now. Luis Albuena stays in the game to play second base. Talk so much about how this game is unpredictable. Sometimes it's very predictable. And cold night with the wind blowing in. A couple quality starters on the mound. We anticipated a low run game. That's exactly what we've gotten. Quintana for the Sox. Dominant early. Didn't allow a base runner until there were two outs in the fifth. Here's Leuri Garcia, switch hitter, pinch hitting in the night spot. For Petritska. And he takes a strike. He had to pitch in the 14th inning against Boston on the 16th of April. Took the loss. Two hundred runs in one inning. 0 and 2. So right now his career ERA is 18. Call strike three. Quickly dispatched by Brian Schlitter. <laughs> Marja struck out seven. Ramirez had one in his one inning of work. Low and outside to Deaza. I think he might have been guessing there. Premeditated swing. Beckham on deck. Call strike three. Back to back K's, both of the looking variety for Schlitter. Good run on that fastball. A lot of late movement. Ground ball up the middle, and it's going to squeak past the middle infielders and into center. Keep the inning alive. Scott Downs, former Cub, is up in the bullpen. Remember, Sierra ran for Abreu. So instead of facing their best hitter, it will be Sierra stayed in the game to play left after running in the ninth for Abreu.
And it's one of those moves you make as a manager to give your club the best chance to win at the time and you hope it doesn't come back to bite you. Say he wouldn't try, but Beckham hasn't been a real base stealer in his career. Moises Sierra. Signed by the Blue Jays back in 07 in the Dominican Republic. Sox just picked him up. He was designated for assignment by the Jays on the 1st of May. He's hitting just 059 last year in limited time, hit 290 for Toronto. Five, the 2 0 pitch on the way, and that one bounced right back up and hit him. Mr. Wright, who was up earlier, continues to work in the pen. I guess he'll get Adam Dunn if Dunn gets an at bat here in the 11th. Back to Slitter. It's a clean lane and flips to Rizzo. Cubs will bat in the bottom of the 11th, still tied at one. to get to and from Wrigley Field or you can ride your bike and use the Cubs courtesy bike check located near the corner of Clark and Waveland for drivers the Cubs provide free parking and shuttle services on night and weekend games from 3900 North Rockwell the Cubs.com for more info. Ex Cubs Scott Downs will pitch here in the bottom of the 11th and Travis Wood will pinch hit for Slitter. Why not? Ball one.
Downs a third round pick of the Cubs in 97 out of University of Kentucky. Chopper foul up along third. Two Ooh, career this. stints in the Cubs organization. Four downs who grew up rooting for the North Siders. Finesse type left hander. Rarely touched 90 miles an hour with the fastball. Good breaking stuff. Which is from the stretch with nobody on, and the 1 1 is low. 2 and 1. The end of the bat and Deaza with an easy play. One out. There's no right handed bats available on the bench for the Cubs tonight. Baker, Coughlin, Kalish, Balbuena made up the bench. Start of the game. Balbuena's been used. Coughlin's been used. So Kalish and Baker were the only options. Cubs decided to go with an extra man in the bullpen and one less bench player. Travis Wood became in play as a pinch hitter. Ball got out of the White Sox bullpen. That's why we had a slight delay. The curveball 0 and 2. Downs debuted as a pro in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, the New York Penn League. That was a Cubs low A affiliate back in 1999. One of his teammates was Franklin Font. Been on the Cubs coaching staff for a while. Outside. And Downs been around a long time. Turned 38 in March. Joined the Expos after leaving the Cubs. You know you've been around a while when you got Expos on your resume. Not too many of those guys left. He's kind of an honorary Canadian, isn't he? Pitched for both the Expos and the Blue Jays. I think you automatically go into the Canadian Baseball Hall so, of yeah. Fame mm -hmm. if you play for both. Big leg kick. And he's now run it full after an 0-2 start. Coglin next. Maybe. Unless Bonifacio ends it right here. Dream big. Fly ball deep to left. And the wind's going <laughs> to kill it. Oh, ruin the script, wind. <laughs> if the wind isn't doing what it's doing, <laughs> he might have. I got to give you all the scenarios, right? And that was one of them. Here's Coughlin. Of course, if the wind wasn't doing what it was doing, it probably would have been seven to five by now. <laughs> 
seventy two on the bender and over oh and one. The way Jeff Samarge has been pitching, I don't think the conditions really matter a whole lot. It's low run baseball, regardless. Just checking out uh, Downs' career. He's also pitched in Ottawa and Edmonton in the minor leagues. So, yeah, he's, he's all over it in Canada. Tom Cherry would love him, and he's from Kentucky. He's got his first hit as a Cub. His third try. The National League Rookie of the Year with the Marlins. Two thousand nine. Chris won that award at three twenty one that year. Rizzo here with a man on and two down. Cubs came in as a team hitting 46 points better in terms of their batting average against lefties than righties. And I've talked about Rizzo who's been really good against Southpaw. Sherholtz has been better against lefties early on than righties. A strike. Cheat up in the box a little bit. About getting on top of that sweeping breaking ball from Downs. Watch, watch him kind of sneaking up. Talk to a lot of former players, hitters, and they, they say they're, they're amazed more guys today don't do that. That it used to be much more common to move your feet around in the box depending on the, the pitcher. Yeah, if guy was a sinker baller or soft tosser, you might move up in the box a little bit. Two two to Rizzo and he laid off. Curve in the dirt and it's full. Nothing wrong with the walk here. It's a winning run into scoring position. Dunn playing behind Coglin who takes off for second and Rizzo bounces foul. Well, your last name is Downs. You're born in Kentucky. Middle name's got to be Churchill, right? I think so. No, it's yeah. Jeremy. By the way, good predict. You picked the winner 
on our air. I did. That's right. California that Chrome. Right. It's the only one I could think of that was in the race. That and Danza. A 1 1 tie in the bottom of the 11th. A 3 2 count on Rizzo. Coglin goes again. There is ball four. Another good at bat by Anthony Rizzo, recognizing that unlikely downs was going to challenge him there. Saw that breaking ball, took his walk, and now. Cubs could win this thing with a Castro base hit. Matchup now favors the Cubs with Castro coming to the plate. And Robin says, I'll take out my lefty and bring in a right hander. I believe it's Daniel Webb coming in. It is. We'll be back in the 11th. Kentucky born big league pitcher. It's Daniel Webb. Well, you can see control's been a bit of an issue for him. Ten free passes in 16 and two thirds innings. And in here to face Castro, but look at the splits, right handed hitters. That's some pretty good batting average against them. Small sample, of course. Nine appearances with the Sox last year, originally a member of the Toronto organization. And all systems go for Gary Jones down there at third base. Ms. Coglin runs pretty well. Run it second. The pitch Castro takes it. Ball one. This little flip piece into right would get the job done. A little flare. Watch out. Giddy up on this fastball up under the chin at 94. A little heat on a cold night. Astro does the limbo. Three and oh. You let him swing away if it's something he can. I, I wouldn't only. Oh, I wouldn't only because the way Webb is throwing right now, there's a chance he could walk in the winning run. 
takes it for a strike. So three and one. With Castillo on deck. I think the fact that Webb had 10 walks and 16 innings coming in this outing and misfired badly those first three pitches to Castro. The kick, the 3 1 pitch, swing and a miss. And the other part of it, too, is I just, you know, as good as Starlin has been this year, he's not a guy that you're confident is, is not going to go out of the zone and chase a bad ball on 3 0. And the runners will go. Three and two, two outs. Swing and a miss on a fastball as Webb gets out of the inning. And we'll go to the 12th. 1 1. One. Seven hits between these two teams. As Wesley Wright will take over for the Cubs here in the 12th. Oh, veteran left hander. First year with the Cubs. So far, so good. Ten appearances. Good numbers posted by Wesley. We've got Adam Dunn. Not sure how much after that. The outfield is very, very deep. My only thing here, JD, I mean, Bonifacio is pinned up against the, the warning track. I feel like taking away the blue pit. Anything over him's out of the park. And I know you're trying to cut off the gap here, but I don't know. Yeah, especially with the wind blowing in the way it is. Yeah. I get the idea of no doubles here, but, but yeah, I think you can play a, a, a kind of a modified version of no doubles because the way the wind is blowing, you can you can come in a little bit, still feel pretty comfortable. And you can cut the ball off. Especially with that, because Adam's not a speedy guy no, either. He's not going to hustle out a double. All in two strikes. Here it comes. See ya. Strike three called. Open has been spot on so far. Maris Schlitter now Wesley Wright starts with a punch out of Adam Dunn. Carving off a slice of outside corner.
when it's rare you've got a 12th inning matchup situation. But the extra arm in the bullpen does give it. Rick Renteria. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. extra moves. Well, and he's also got Carlos Villanueva down there who stretched out and, you know, could ultimately be the guy who says, all right, we've gone through the bullpen. We've played every matchup advantage we can. Here's the ball. You're my guy the rest of the night. Here's Justin Grimm when we come back. One out, nobody on here in the 12th. It's Grimm versus Viciedo. Viciedo is 0 for 4. He reached down an error in his second at bat. Batting average is taking a pretty good hit here tonight. Viciedo came in hitting 330. Justin Grimm works for the 16th time. 1 0 with a 213. Yeah, you, you mentioned batting averages. It's a 1 0 tap foul. The uh, players in this game are collective 7 for 70. That's a 100 batting average. <laughs> Not a whole lot of slugging going on either. Yeah, we've seen uh, two extra base hits, doubles by Dunn and Samarja in 12 innings. A strike, it's 1 and 2. Chris Peter there from Justin Grimm worked twice in the St. Louis series so ineffective Friday allowed two runs and one third of an inning and a walk gave up a long ball and then last night one scoreless inning with a strikeout. Swing and a miss two down. Heroic swing coming up empty. Curve strike to Ramirez. Ball base hit, and that's a milestone for Ramirez, his 1,000th career hit. Keeps the inning alive here in the 12th, and the White Sox are asking for the ball. Ramirez has stolen four bases this year. He's been caught once. No 
know doubles defense makes a little more sense now with his speed to base hit he could score. The outfielders remain deep and old tight to the line there at third. Fifth hit for the White Sox. Only their second since the fifth inning. Cubs only have three hits in the ball game. Down the middle, 93. It's 0 and 1 on Flowers. Merco and Nieto remain on the bench for the White Sox. Fakes towards second. Took about three steps and then stopped. That's good. Good baseball. It comes under the category of playing the whole game. Right, a little movement on the infield. Get the catcher to come up out of his crouch. Maybe get a ball called on a pitch that otherwise would have been a strike. Corner two and one. So Marja went nine Ramirez and Schlitter each with an inning Wright got the first out. Here in the 12th Ramirez runs this time the pitch is up and in and he'll get it without a throw. Wellington had all he could do just to catch that running fastball from Grimman with the jump Ramirez got they weren't going to throw him out anyway. Only their second runner in scoring position since the fifth. It's three and one on Flowers. Simeon's on deck. All right, so don't give in here. You've got a base open. And he walks him. Certainly had the feel of not going to give in. Yeah, when Wellington set up in the left handed hitter's <laughs> batter's box there, we had a pretty good feeling <laughs> what the game plan was. Simeon uh, snapped an 0 for 13 with a fifth inning single. He's one out of four. Third base, Connor Gillespie on the DL with a hand contusion. And their third baseman of the future is Matt Davidson. They got him from the Diamondbacks. He's a triple A and he's scuffling, hitting just 165. Grim with an 0-1. Now one and one.
Canerco on deck for the second time. one to take the lead Ramirez will score Flowers will stop at third Marcus Simeon with a go ahead RBI double and it's two to one Paul Canerco. For the White Sox, number 14, Paul Canerco. Part time role for Canerco. He knew going in that he was not going to play a whole lot this year. And what a career he's had. Almost taking on the role of player coach with this club. You almost want to put the word emeritus behind yeah. his name. He's their captain and he takes a strike. Well, you can feel however you want to about the White Sox, but it's hard not to have a ton of respect for Paul Canerco. Pretty impressive resume. A pro's pro, 18 years in the big league, 16 with the Sox, six time All Star. And he just got hit by that pitch to load the bases. An elbow guard, but that ball hit him on the forearm. Five, six, seven, do up for the Cubs in the bottom of the twelfth. <laughs> so Canerco, you know, much of his career, a guy just play every day. But tonight he sits on the bench yeah, well. for almost four hours. Gets to the plate and then gets drilled on the yeah. forearm, and now he'll exit. Takes 93 off the forearm, yeah, after sitting in the, in the dugout for four hours and a 39 degree night. Well, at the point now, Andre Rienzo, their starting pitchers, has to run for him. I think I've seen him on PBS playing the violin. Sure. Rienzo, the only pitcher in their current rotation who will not start in this series. He's scheduled to pitch next against Arizona on the south side on Friday. One and one. Just trying to keep the White Sox within reach here. A 1 1 pitch, it's 2 and 1. And just flying open a little bit. Lindstrom will get the bottom of this 12th inning. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to get this final out here and, and, and put a little pressure on Lindstrom. It'll give him a cushion to work with. He's converted only four out of seven save opportunities this year. Control can be a real issue for him. You don't want to give him any extra breathing room.
Well, he's at the mercy of the count now. The three one with the bases loaded and he just walked in a run to make it three to one. Deaza gets an RBI. There's nobody up in the Cubs bullpen right now as Rick Renteria heads out. Somebody's going to start to crank it up out there. Russell, who was up, man, back in the sixth or seventh. That was a couple of hours ago. He cranks it up here in the twelfth, and now Beckham with the bases still loaded, two runs in. Getting started with a couple of punch outs. Wesley Wright struck out Adam Dunn. His night was over. Grimm came in, came in, punched out Viciedo, and things were looking good. Two quick outs, but single walk, double, hit batsman, RBI walk. The 0 1 offering, and Beckham was late, 0 and 2. Upstairs. Struck him out, but the damage done as the White Sox get a couple and lead three to one as we go to the last of the 12. Lindstrom on in a save situation. Veteran right hander two and one with a three twenty one four saves and seven tries. 
Not a hit per inning. He's walked seven, struck out eight, been around. Started with the Mets organization. He's been in the big leagues with the Marlins, the Astros, the Rockies, the Orioles, the D backs. This is his second year with the White Sox. Power sinker and a slider. Didn't quite have the giddy up on the fastball that he once did. Still above average. Castillo, Scherholz, and Alt do here in the 12th. Sliders high. Miss badly, two and zero. Oh. Yeah, I don't think you have to be in take mode here. They can throw a strike. Lindstrom used to throw really hard. Mid to upper nineties. A bit particularly close here to start this inning. Three balls, no strikes. Is from Rexburg, Idaho. There's a pitch. Ball four nearly hit Castillo. He's aboard. The tying run will come up. He'll be taking a strike. Got the outside call one and one. More ground balls than he used to. He's trying to get one here, and he does. And they are going to turn a 4 3 double play. So two outs and it's up to Alt to keep the Cubs alive here in the 12th inning. In there, it's one and one. Now, Blaina on deck. Cubs need to get him to the plate representing the tying run. And he will come up. Alt with a base hit. Snapping a personal 0 for 15. They're not done yet. Trailing by two. 
White Sox started their rally after they were two out. Now Buena likes to hit the fastball. To Seymour. All takes off for second, no throw, and no stolen base. All that defensive indifference. Oh, and one on Valbuena. Right handers tomorrow night Hector Noesi and Edwin Jackson before we head to the south side on Wednesday night. Swing and a miss, and the White Sox take game one. They get two runs in the top of the 12th. And beat the Cubs three to one. The Cubs mustering just four base hits in 12 innings. Sox didn't do a whole lot better. They had six. And as we talked throughout the game, it figured to be a pitcher's night tonight. There's a lot of good stuff going on from both sides. The starters in particular, Quintana was perfect for a good stretch. And Samarja, nine innings of three hit, one run. It was unearned baseball. He struck out seven. He remains. Winless. He is our GMC player of the game. So the frustrations continue, but he was really, really good again. Last year against the White Sox, towards the end of May, he pitched a complete game, two hit shutout. And uh, the Cubs wouldn't have scored at all if not for his leadoff double. So Samarja's earned run average down to 1.62 among the league leaders, but seven starts in, still without a victory. Great work by our entire crew and for J.D. and our CSN crew. This is Len Casper wrapping up our game broadcast. The final tonight in 12, the White Sox 3 and the Cubs 1. Tomorrow, 6.30 for the pregame coverage on CSN. White Sox and Cubs in game 2. We're not done yet. Up next, Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs post-game live. Stay tuned.